Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the LG G-Pad 8.3. 8.3 is the size 8.3 inch LCD IPS display. So this is LG's return to the tablet market. This is running Android 4.2.2 and is really here to take on something like the iPad Mini. So I think it's kind of interesting that LG decided to go with the sort of mid-range size as opposed to the small 7-inch tablets or the larger 10-inch tablets. So this seems to be the sweet spot of the market right now. So this retails for $350. It's available in Wi-Fi only at the time. Uh, cellular version has not not been announced. You can get this in black or white. Has 16 gigs of internal storage, 2 gigs of RAM, a 1.7 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 600 processor, 5 megapixel camera without, the, without an LED flash. But we do have an IR blaster for controlling your TV, and you do have a few features familiar to the LG G2, which we'll explore here. So really, this is sort of a companion device to the LG G2, both in its software as well as some features, and we'll explore some of those here. Now we have a pretty decent 8.3 inch LCD IPS display here with a resolution of 1200 by 1920 that gives us a pixel density of 273 so that's a little bit better than the iPad Air's uh, 264 not quite up to iPad mini retina display resolution with 326 ppi uh, but still a pretty decent display for $350. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. And I did remove a piece of tape that was holding down this flap. It was also covering up some of the information I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to lift this lid up here. There is our LG G Pad. A little tab here to lift up. So there it is. We'll take a closer look at this. It does have the silver back panel with the, with the plastic trim pieces. Very nice, very lightweight and thin. You can see I have a piece of plastic covering the screen right now. Let's set that aside and take a look at some of the accessories that come with it. So we have our literature, quick start guide. We're familiar with this stuff. Uh, we're gonna explore some of those features. We also have our adapter. This is our wall adapter, fairly large, obviously to charge this battery. We have our micro USB charging cable as well. And that's about it. So you do not get headphones or anything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the tablet and take a close look around. First, let's remove the plastic. So we have a little tab up here to lift up. All right, so let's go and take a look at the design of the LG G Pad. I actually really like it. We have this nice aluminum back panel, which adds to the rigidity as well as that cool feeling when you handle it, similar to something like an iPad Mini. Now, it doesn't completely surround the back. It's just sort of a back panel. It's non-removable. Along the edge, you have this plastic surround, which is nice. It's not a glossy plastic. It's sort of a sandblasted plastic. It feels similar in texture to the metal. Uh, very nice, and you can see it's got this nice design to it. Along the back, you have these stereo speakers with these uh, grills, as you can see inside. Along the side, not much. On the top, you'll find your headphone jack as well as a micro SD card slot, so you can expand storage up to 64 gigs. Uh, we also have an IR blaster up here for controlling your AV equipment. Of course, they do give you software. Again, very similar to the LG G2. You also have that 5 megapixel autofocusing camera capable of recording your video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. This also has electronic stabilization built in. We do have our volume controls on the right, yeah, the right side, up and down, as well as your sleep-wake power-on button. Again, metal to match the metal along the side. On the bottom, you just find a micro USB connector, which also is slim port, so you can connect a display to your micro uh, SD, micro USB uh, connector if you want to output your display to a device. You also have your uh, microphone down here. If you look along the side, you see we have this little bezel around the glass, but mostly edge to edge glass. You have no off screen Android controls, they're all on screen. Now, at the top, we'll find an ambient light sensor as well as a front facing camera, which is 1.3 megapixels, and this records video up to 720p resolution. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up. I have been using this for about a week, so it's all set up and ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and start looking at our basic user interface, starting with the lock screen. And as you can see, we do have those familiar Vienna Boys Choir ringtones or notification tones that we're familiar with on the LG G2. And I'll explore how you can deactivate those if they're annoying to you. But you basically get this notification by default that life is good. That's, uh, of course, LG's branding. All right, so starting with the lock screen, you see we have this little animation here for unlocking it. But there are quite a few other things up here we can take a look at. So we have these shortcuts to get to uh, popular apps. These are the ones they included by default. So that includes Chrome, email, the notebook app, as well as the gallery and camera. But you can also activate the camera by swiping to the right. So that gets you to the camera. Or you can, whoops, let's go back to the lock screen. You can also swipe across one of the widgets up here, like the clock widget. As you can see, you get a little weather widget. Uh, if you swipe to the right, you can also add additional lock screen widgets. So for example, if you want your Gmail widget, you can do that as well. And you can select uh, your folder. So now, there you go. If you go back to the lock screen, let's take a look. Swipe, there you go. Now like the LG G2, we also have that knock-on feature. So basically, you can double tap on the screen to unlock it. 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It seems to be a lot less reliable with the G-Pad. You can also put it to sleep the same way, just by double tapping on it. And of course, you can do this anywhere. So for example, if you're on your home screen, just double tap on the home screen. Or if you're in an app that uh, doesn't have really a blank touch area you can interface with, like uh, the browser, so you can just double tap the uh, top menu bar there to put it to sleep. All right, so let's go and take a look at the basic user interface starting with the home screen. So you can pinch in and out to see all of your home screens and you can add new home screens or you can drag them up here to remove them. You can also select which one you want to be your home screen by tapping that toggle up here and choosing which one you want. Hit home, takes you back. If you tap and hold anywhere on the home screen, you get to your home screen editor. So here are your apps. These are the apps they've included. You also have your widgets. You also have your wallpapers. So you can set your wallpapers from this screen. So for example, if you want to drag and drop any one of your apps in here, you can take it up here or you can take it to one of the other home screens. Just drop it. Uh, you can also remove them just by tapping and holding it, taking it up to remove. And the other great thing here is that uh, you can dra drag and drop as many as you want here and you can folder them pretty easily. So for example, if I want to create a folder, just hover it over the uh, other app, and there you go. And you can tap on that folder, and you can edit the name, but you also have several other options here. You can change the folder color. And I can also edit the size of the folder just by tapping and holding on it. Then you get this little editor, and you can resize it to what you want. Now, if you want to know more about your LG G-Pad, just swipe all the way to the right and you get this little panel here full of uh, tutorials. So videos demonstrating some of its features, and of course, most of them will be demonstrated here. Now we also have our drop down notification shade which has been loaded with lots of settings and quick access toggles. We have our brightness controls as well as our volume controls. You can quickly enable auto mode. You can also get to your volume settings here. So you have very specific controls for those as well. Now you have lots of quick access settings up here including quick memo. Basically quick memo takes a screen grab of whatever you're doing right now. That's just the home screen that allows you to edit on it. So for example, even though we don't have a stylus here, you can use your finger so you can change your, your pen tip change your pen color and you can write on it. Hello and you can go ahead and save it. So you can save it to either your gallery or your notebook app. So let's go ahead and save it to the notebook app. Now we can also toggle on quick remote so you can use your device to remotely control your AV equipment. We also have sound so you can set it to vibrate, silent, or a regular sound. We have Wi-Fi, which you can toggle on and off. Bluetooth, we have Q-Pair, which is a feature I'll demonstrate later. GPS, rotation lock, syncing, Miracast, so you can remotely display your, your or wirelessly display your uh, screen onto a Miracast TV. We also have battery saver mode, airplane mode, screen timeout, wireless storage. So this has a feature where you can actually go to your uh, to a computer, like a, a web browser on a computer on your wireless network and, and wirelessly access the storage of this device to transfer, for example, your photos or video. Uh, airplane mode, again, you can just toggle on and off. You get this little animation here. Now you can also edit what appears in this Q slide memo. So you can see you can select specific apps here or you can move them around. Now there's a lot of customization here. You can also do this with the uh, toggles up here if you go to edit. Again, same story here. You can select which ones you want to appear or you can move them around just by dragging and dropping them around. Now we also have these Q slide apps and they're kind of windowed apps that enable some multitasking. So for example, we have the videos app. Uh, internet browser, the calendar, an email app, VoiceMate, which is the voice assistant, similar to Siri or S Voice. And we have file, the file manager, a calculator, and a memo. So, for example, if you want a calculator, it brings up this sort of windowed app which you can move around and resize. We have a little corner down here to resize the app. Uh, you also have this transparency slider here, which allows you to reduce its transparency so you can see whatever you're doing and you can interact with the screen without interacting with the app. If you want to gain control of the uh, app again, you just have to bring up the opacity and you have your calculator. Now you can add other apps here, so let's go ahead and add the memo app. So there you go, you can move this around and again, you can tap on any one of them to cycle between them and you can also change the opacity on one of them so you can work on the other. Uh, now you're limited to two, so for example, if you want to add the email app, there you go, maximum number of windows ready. Uh, so we're gonna have to close one of them to do that. So you get the idea, it's sort of a multitasking solution. Now like the LG G2, we also have Slide Aside, which allows us to save up to three apps at once. So for example, we can bring up the Chrome browser, use this three finger gesture on the screen to slide it to the left, and it saves the state. We can do this for another app, such as the Gallery app, Slide It Aside. Uh, let's do the Calendar app next. Slide aside. So now we have a little notification up here letting us know that currently we have three apps that have been saved. Uh, and you can also quickly access them by tapping it right there. Or you can use the three finger gesture to bring them up. Now you can see we have this little X up here to close them. 
So if you want to close them, you can, but you can also bring them forward just by tapping on them. Now, if you want to save the state again, you do have to slide it aside again. So you slide it out. There are your three apps, and you can swipe them out of the way, tap on them, slide it aside, and add another app. So go back to the calendar, slide it aside, and there you go. So that's one way of multitasking. I find it a little clumsy, a little cumbersome. You can also slide them out of the way to close them. That's one way of managing it. Now taking a look at our Android controls, these are also translucent. Again, just like on the LG G2. So for example, if you're on the home screen, the wallpaper completely fills up behind them. Of course, not all apps support this, such as Chrome. So if you go to Chrome, it does not fill up behind them. Uh, but uh, these are highly customizable. There are lots of options here, and we'll take a look at that under settings. But for right now, this is the default configuration. So we have our back button, we have our home button, and we have our settings button. Uh, this is contextual, of course. Now, our home button has several purposes. So, for example, if you tap and hold on it, it takes you to your recent apps, which allows you to quickly access them or close them. So you can tap on that to get to them, and you can close them to get rid of them. Now, if you swipe up on the home button, you can get to Google Now, or you can get to Voicemate, or the Quick Memo. Now, Quick Memo, again, takes a screen grab of whatever you're doing, allows you to annotate on it. Now, with uh, Voicemate, it's a voice assistant similar to Siri. It's fully integrated. What's the weather like tomorrow? On Saturday, your current location will be mostly cloudy. Set a reminder for 8 p.m. tonight to get this review done. I'm sorry, I did not understand. So as you can see, there are some limitations to this app compared to something like Siri or Google Now, which can perform those actions for you. Now you can also swipe up to get to Google Now, but unfortunately it doesn't automatically activate voice search, so you have to activate it manually. Set a reminder for 8 p.m. tonight to get this review done. All right, so you can see it's going to set my reminder. So the great thing here is that even though VoiceMate is pretty limited, at least you have full control here with uh, the Google Now app. Now, taking a look at our apps, we have a full array of apps from both Google and LG. So it pretty much covers all the basics from a video editor right there. It allows you to create a video just like iMovie. We have our Google Play apps, such as Play Games, Magazines, Movies, and TV, Playbooks. We also have a Google Play Store, of course. Uh, and then we have a standard array of utilities, such as the Alarm Clock app. This allows you to, for example, add certain cities. Uh, our calculator, which is one of the Q-Slide apps. So basically, you have a little minimize button up here, which windows it for you. Uh, and then you have your camera app, Chrome. You also have the WebKit browser right here, the standard WebKit browser. You have your downloads folder. You have your contacts, gallery app, uh, Gmail, again, Google Apps. We also have LG Backup, which basically allows you to back up your device content to either the internal storage or to an SD card slot. You also have something called Life Square, which is an app I haven't been able to get to work properly. But basically, it aggregates everything from Twitter and Facebook, as well as your video gallery and your... Uh, uh, your calendars and that sort of thing, your voice memos, everything into this one sort of utility. Now we also have our memo app, which is another Q slide app here again, so you can minimize it and window it for you, or you can go to full screen. You have our full keyboard here, which we'll take a look at a bit later. We also have our music player, and they've given us a few songs to demonstrate here, so we can do the Vienna Boys Life is Good Choir. It also allows you to demonstrate those speakers, again, very good sounding speakers. All right, so now up here you have YouTube, which will do a search on YouTube for this content. So it brings it up for you as well. Now we also have this notebook app, which basically allows you to scrapbook stuff. So for example, if you're doing a uh, project, such as a uh, research project, this is where you kind of drag and drop uh, your clip art or your clipped items, text, that sort of thing, and all aggregates here. So for example, I did a screen grab recently, it should be in here somewhere. So if I go to the quick memo, there it is. So this allows me to continue editing that item or uh, go ahead and create another project. Now we also have our tasks app. So you can go ahead and create a new reminder and you can add an account to which it can sync to, such as an email account and an exchange account and that sort of thing. We have the update center, which is where you update all of your apps or your software installation. So you can set it to automatic or check for updates now. Now we also have our videos app and they give us some samples here to test out the quality of the display. So let's go ahead and go to Norway, take a look at the quality here. So now if you look really closely here, you can see just how sharp this display looks excellent. Now since the video player is a Q-Slide app, you can also minimize it. 
and continue playing your video in the background. You can move it around as well as resize it. And you can also change the transparency so you can uh, interact uh, with the screen behind it while your video continues to play. And you can also maximize it again. Now we also have our Voice Mate app, which again is a Q-Slide app, so you can minimize it and have Voice Mate uh, sort of hovering in the background working for you. Now we have the Voice Recorder app, so you can record audio memos. We also have the Weather app, which integrates with the lock screen weather widget. Now we also have Box, which is sort of a Dropbox competitor. It's basically online storage. Now we also have this Dictionary app, which allows you to download uh, one dictionary for free. So in my case, I downloaded the English slash German dictionary. Uh, if you want other ones, you have to pay for them. Now we also have our File Manager, which is a really nice app. You can see it uh, sort of breaks it down in, into categories such as uh, music, video, images, and documents. So you can see a complete aggregation of your available space. So if you select all files, you can select your file tree and basically drill down and see everything. But you can see how much storage we're taking up right now which is about, uh, looks like uh, we have 9.47 gigs available. Only 11 gigs are available to the user. So it looks like some of that has been eaten up by the uh, uh, operating system. You can also go to your video files and see them like that. So you can see preload. Those are the files they've included. And of course, you can add your own. We also have the full Polaris Office Suite for editing and creating Office standard Office files like uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. We have LG Smart World, which is basically their app store. This is where you can purchase wallpapers, ringtones, and apps from LG. And of course, you have to create an LG account if you don't have one already. You have your task manager here. This is where you can stop your apps uh, and see how much RAM they're taking up. You can see I have only 261 megs free, and I can go ahead and stop them all. Now, we also have this translator app, which actually works pretty well. So, for example, you can speak in a language, and it will output in another language. So right now, I've selected English or German, but you can select which language you want from here. So let me go ahead and try this out. Where do you live? Wo leben Sie? Ich habe Kopfweh. I have a headache. Now you can also take a photograph of text and translate it into another language. And you can select whether you want to select a line, a specific word, or a block of text. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of our settings. Now we can jump to our settings either from this app or we can go to the drop down shade and the little settings icon next to the clock is right there. Uh, so we have standard array of settings including Wi-Fi. And up here you can see we have this little, little sort of toggle up here for turning certain features on. You'll see this across the settings panel. Uh, you also have Bluetooth. So you can change your Bluetooth settings here. Data usage, you have more settings as well. Wireless storage, which you can toggle on. Miracast, which you can also toggle on. Again, all these are also available from the drop-down menu. Smart Share Beam, so you can turn on and receive multimedia content via Smart Share Beam from LG phones or tablets, which is an LG exclusive feature. We also have VPN controls. Now under sound, we also have our notification sounds, and this is where you can turn off the default Life is Good Vienna Boy Choir Tone. So you have lots of options here, including other Vienna Boy uh, tones. Hello. Hello. And Arpeggio. Uh, so I find these particularly annoying. Of course, the LG G2 has lots of these, including ringtones, and you can select something else. Uh, just to note, we do have a vibration motor in this device, so you do have haptic feedback. Display, so you can change your home screen here. So you can change the wallpaper, screen wipe effect. Uh, so you can see we have several options here. I'm not going to go through all of them. You can also allow screen looping, so if you enable this, uh, if you go to screen looping now, you can see it just continues to swipe through it. Now you also have lock screen, and this is where you can select which apps appear, or which shortcuts appear on the lock screen. So if you go to this editor here, you can see the ones they've included, and you can go to this little edit icon. So for example, let's go ahead and remove notebook. Uh, so it gets you to your apps, and here you can delete the shortcut, or you can select something else. So for example, if you want the calculator here, just to select that, it changes it to calculator. Now we can also see our storage here, so you can see we have about 9.47 gigs available. Our battery, so you can see how much battery is discharging. You can also enable the battery percentage icon up here, which is off by default. And you can also enable battery saver mode. You can also see all of your apps as well, so you can see downloaded, running apps, all apps, and more. You can see how much space we've used up so far. You also see the slide aside effect, which you can toggle on and off. Now, we also have accounts in sync, and this is where you can add additional Google accounts or Microsoft Exchange accounts or email accounts, such as an IMAP account. Now, we also have users here, so you can add additional users. Uh, so right now, I can see my account, and I've also added another user. So I can trash that user right now, and we're going to add another one just to show you here. So if you go to Add User, click OK, 
And we're going to go ahead and set that up now. So what happens when you do this is that if you go to the lock screen, you have these two user icons down here. So if you want to unlock in, unlock in any one of these accounts, just tap on any one of them and swipe up to access them. And of course, I just set this up. I just set up this account, so right now I'm going to have to reset my device just for that user. Now this means they can log into their own Google account to sync all of their information without affecting yours. Now this user can completely customize their experience unique to them. So for example, they can choose their own wallpaper. Let's just go with the Feather app or Feather wallpaper. Click OK so you can see. Uh, and they can also rearrange the apps. They can put them in their own folders and that sort of thing. And now if you want to get to your account, just lock the device, unlock it, select your account, swipe up, and there you go. And it's just like nothing happened. Now, like I said, you can also delete that account because you are the account holder for this device. Now, under our display settings, we also have smart screen and smart video, which are toggled off by default. Now, this is familiar to the LG G2 as well, and uh, is pretty similar to what Samsung does. So smart screen is like smart stay. Basically, it monitors for the presence of your eyes using that front camera. Uh, so it prevents the display from going to sleep. We also have smart video, which pauses video playback or resumes it depending on whether you're looking at or not. Now we can also configure our front touch buttons. And as you can see, we have our default configuration and you can pick ones that change the order or you can pick ones that actually add features, including this sort of drop down shade button. So instead of swiping down from the top, you can actually tap the button down here. You can also add quick memo. So it adds that quick memo icon, which does a screen grab for us and allows us to annotate on it. Or you can add both. So if you want both, or you can change the order of how you want that. Uh, so you can have both the drop down shade and the quick memo icon, as well as all the other standard Android controls. Now you can also change the theme from white to white gradation, or black, or black gradation. As you can see, it changes here. Now by default, we have a transparent background, but if you uncheck that and now go to the home screen, you can see that our menu bar is now permanently opaque. Now you also have your location settings, and this does have GPS antennas in it. Uh, security settings, language and input, backup and reset, uh, date and time, accessibility, PC connection, so you can change how this behaves. So for example, uh, the USB connection method, you can see you have several options here. Accessory modes, as well as about this tablet. So here you can find out uh, about your software. So if we go to software information, see Android 4.2.2. Now if we go to the WebKit browser, uh, this actually has a feature that's kind of interesting here. So I went to The Verge. This is a full desktop view of The Verge. Uh, if we go to Menu here, we have something called Capture Plus. So basically what will happen is that it captures an image of the entire website from top to bottom and saves it to our photo gallery. So you can crop it if you want, but we're just going to save the entire thing and take a look at it. So now if we go to our photo gallery, you can pinch all the way in to see the text, scroll around, and you have it permanently saved in your gallery. All right, so let's take a quick look at QPair. So QPair is an app that comes standard with the LG G Pad and the LG G2, but you can download it free from the Google Play Store as I have with my Nexus 5 here. They connect through Bluetooth, so they communicate through Bluetooth, and when you have it active, you can actually see it in the notification panel up here. So you can see uh, QPair activated and you can tap on them to disable them. So if you don't want this to constantly be happening, you can turn them off. So it does drain battery life uh, when you're using this feature. But basically, it allows your smartphone to stay connected to your tablet. So you can receive call notifications. You can't receive calls on the tablet, but you can receive call notifications, and you can reject them or send a notification or that sort of thing from your tablet, but you do have to pick it up on your smartphone. You can also receive message notifications. Uh, so, for example, text messages will appear here, and when they do, they pop up on the screen, and you can reply to them, um, but you do not have a, a messaging app on the tablet. So, all the history will not be saved on the tablet. You have to go to your smartphone, but it does stay synced, so any message you send here will appear on your smartphone. You can also receive social media notifications, and you can select specifically which apps you want to receive notifications from, such as Facebook, Foursquare. Google Plus Hangouts and a lot of others that I actually don't have installed on the other device, but uh, you can see Twitter here. So all of those will appear in your notification panel as well when you receive notifications on your phone. Of course, you could just install those apps and it would do the same thing. But you can also use tethering mode here. This is where you can uh, access tethering. So you can tether your internet from your cellular internet from your mobile device to your tablet so you can maintain internet connectivity even when you're not in Wi-Fi. Now, just to take a look at our keyboard, we do have a split keyboard, which is available here. So if you split, this allows you to thumb type it. So this works in both landscape and portrait orientation.
Now, LG has done a really nice job with this display. It's really bright and vivid with nice colors, and it's really sharp, so even the smallest text on the full website is still readable. Uh, and uh, it's definitely a great reading device, and coupled with the fact that it's still really lightweight, makes us a great uh, tablet for reading textbooks or that sort of thing. Now, just to give you an idea of the size comparison between this and the iPad Mini. Now, the iPad Mini is certainly thinner, but it is wider, as you can see in portrait orientation, and not as tall. In landscape orientation, that's because the iPad favors this 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which gives you a pretty balanced experience both in portrait orientation as well as landscape orientation. Uh, this is a little less... Uh, comfortable to handle in portrait orientation just because there's so much weight toward the top so if you're down here handling the keyboard it does feel a little more awkward than something like the iPad mini this wants to be used mostly in landscape orientation which feels really comfortable uh, but as you can see it's slight difference in size but both tablets are fairly lightweight and thin all right, so let's go and take a look at our camera app. So we have tap to focus, also adjust the exposure depending on what you're tapping here. Uh, you can shoot your photo. You can also switch to video mode. Now when you record video, you can also snap photos at the same time. You can pause it and you can resume it or you can stop it. Now let's go back to still mode and you can see we have lots of options to pick from. So we have normal, dynamic or HDR. Uh, panorama, VR panorama, continuous shot, beauty shot, time catch shot, uh, sports mode, and night mode. And you can change the viewer here as you prefer. Uh, now, we also have settings here. And if we go to settings, you have lots of things that are easy to access right from the settings panel. So you can go to autofocus, change how that behaves. You can change your image size. You can change your color effect, white balance. So pretty nice user interface overall. You can also enable your volume uh, control for your shutter release or your zoom key. You can also reset all these back to default. You can also enable geotagging. So let's select on. Now, of course, you don't have features like dual shot mode and a lot of other things that the LG G2 can also do. Now, in terms of system performance, the LG G Pad is sort of mid-pack. It's still well south of something like a high-end modern smartphone like the Nexus 5, and certainly well south of the iPad Air. But it's much better than the iPad Mini without Retina display. Now, while this isn't as quick and smooth as something like the Nexus 7, this is still a very smooth operating tablet, especially for something that's heavily skinned. So we have lots of software features and a lot of animations going on, but it's really slick and smooth. And it doesn't have really next-generation hardware specs we don't have a Snapdragon 800 processor clock at 2.3 gigahertz. This is only 1.7 gigahertz. So it still gets the job done, especially on this high resolution display. I'm pretty impressed overall by what I see here. Of course, we have lots of software features. Some of them are useful. So for example, for me, that knock on effect or that knock on feature uh, is really useful. Uh, I actually use it a lot. I wish actually every device did this. But in the end, you're still left with what I think is the perfect size tablet with a beautiful display, nice lightweight thin form factor that's made very well and costs only $350. So I definitely highly recommend the LG G Pad. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the front facing camera. Again, this is 1.3 megapixels, records video at 720p resolution. So it's a pretty basic camera, gets the job done. Also gives you an idea of the audio pickup of those microphones. All right, this is just a test of the main camera, the rear firing camera, just to see how this looks. Again, this is a 1080p video at 30 frames per second. And we're gonna do some indoor tests with the girls, and then we're gonna go outside and take a look at how it works outside in bright light. Hey girls, hey Zoe, hey Zoe, hey Zoe. What, Chloe? What? The camera's over here. They can't see you there. There you are. All right, let's go outside.